Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another Ocean Conservation Trust live lesson. My name's Esther, and you're joining me here at the National Marine Aquarium in Plymouth. And we have a super exciting lesson for you today. But before we get onto it, I really want to show you some of the incredible things that we've been sent in here at the aquarium. You guys have been so busy. And I just wanted to share with you some of these beautiful pictures that we've received. We've got this beautiful rainbow jellyfish that's from Isla and Poppy at Wydie Court Primary. That's right here in Plymouth. Um, so thank you to everyone at Wydie Court. And from further afield, we've got this beautiful toothy anglerfish. Uh, that's from Julianne over at Wicklow in Ireland. In fact, we've had so many things from Ireland. So our Irish contingent are really representing with their craft and their creations. We've even had some 3D models created. Maya here who wants to be a marine biologist. She's done some 3D modeling. Um, I've been so impressed with all of these things that you're sending in. And we've got a great video. Um, there's one from Rosa who did it about her junk monster. I absolutely loved it because she made it out of recycled materials. So please keep them coming in. If you can see them up there or if you sent them to us, we've really enjoyed seeing them. So a huge well done to you guys with all those volcano eruptions and those fishy creations. Now, you might be wondering why I'm wearing a sailor's hat. Um, well, that's all to do with our topic today, which is nautical navigation. It also explains why we're in front of this tank. This is our beautiful Eddystone Reef Tank, and it's named after a lighthouse that marks a reef just off the coast of Plymouth. And the reason we're talking about lighthouses, and I want to know, do you know what the job of a lighthouse is? Because it's relevant to our topic today. We're learning how do we navigate the ocean? How do we find our way in the sea? Because there's no signposts, there's no sat nav, and it's pretty big. Did you know that 70% of the planet is covered in water? And it's one big ocean. That's a lot of ocean to navigate. So we want to know how do we find our way at sea? Whether we're sailing on a boat or like Ant and his family in the deep, they were in a submarine and they had to navigate their way around the sea. So we want to know, how do we do it? You might be snorkeling or scuba diving even, like we do in our tanks here or out at sea. We need to know how to find our way. And it's kind of the same as on land. You've probably used one of these before. A map. You get ordnance survey maps. You get road maps. But at sea, we use charts like this one. So boats and submarines use charts of the ocean to help them navigate. And they're really detailed. If we looked carefully near the bottom here, we'd be able to see the Eddystone Lighthouse marked on here. And as many of you know, lighthouses, their purpose is to help boats and submarines to keep clear of dangerous coastlines and rocky shores. It helps them to find their way, but they also need the map. So your job this week is to make a map. Do you remember in the deep this week, Ant and his family had to go and find a treasure map to recover the treasure? Well, I want you to create a map. I have to use them all the time. When we go scuba diving, we look at maps of the dive site that we're going to explore. So that we know where we're gonna find turtles, where we might find some eel worms. This is a beautiful dive site on the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. What I would like you to do is create your own map. You might want to do one of a treasure island, like this beautiful one here that we made earlier. You can show different features on it, maybe some shipwreck cove or um, some mountains. I just want you to get really creative with anything on your map that you want to do. Maybe you've got a pirate outfit you want to wear and really get into character while you're drawing your treasure map. So get creative. If you're not feeling like doing art, you might have a puzzle puzzle map that you could do at home. Maybe do a puzzle, um, something geography linked. Maybe even do a Zoom quiz with your friends to do with geography, but something to do with maps. I want you to create it. Maybe even draw a key. A lot of really good maps have a key to show you the different features. But when we're navigating the ocean, we don't just use a map. You might notice on all of these maps, they've got something in common. This one, this one, this one, and this one. They all show you where north is. And that's really important to know which direction is north. On the globe, it's easy. It's just at the top here, the North Pole. But on a map, it's a little bit trickier if you're drawing your own. You're going to need to use one of these. This is a compass. This is the one that I use when I go scuba diving. But you might be more familiar with one that looks like this. This is the type that we use when we go hiking or walking out on the moors and outside. 
and you use them alongside your map to help you know which way is north. So you've got your map that you're creating now and you need a compass, but don't worry if you don't have one because I'm going to show you how to make one. Are you ready for some science? All you're going to need is a paper clip or a metal hairpin would work fine as well. Um, you can even use a needle if you've got one. And you're gonna need a piece of card. So I just drew around a glass like this and then cut it out to get a little disc of card. If you've got some cork lying around, anything that floats really, I'm sure there's a lot of corks at home during lockdown. So see if you can find one and get something that floats. Once you've got your paper clip, I want you to flatten it out and then you're going to need a magnet. Now I've got some fridge magnets over here that I'm going to use. And you're just going to stroke your needle or your piece of metal in one direction. Now, if you're thinking, I don't have a magnet at home, that doesn't matter because you've probably got a fridge at home. If you've got a fridge at home, open it up. You might find it's quite tricky to open. That's because this strip along here is a magnetic strip. So you could just rub your metal stick along there, your needle along that. And you're going to need it to do it about 50 to 80 times. So if you are doing it on your fridge, you might get a little bit chilly, but just make sure you keep doing it in one direction and don't bash it too hard. While we're waiting for me to do this, you might want to have a little look. There's a little link to our first lesson on the fridge. Can any of you spot which magnet links to our first ever lesson? Some of you might remember we talked about volcanoes and the place where the largest volcano on the planet, the, the most active volcano on the planet was Mount Kilauea in Hawaii. So if you're all thinking it's that pineapple one from Hawaii, you're right. So it's really important when you get to this point that you don't drop or bash your needle because that will mean you have to start again because it will change the direction of all the electrons in the metal. So I'm just stroking it really gently here in one direction and then you're going to need to get a tray or a plate or a bowl and fill it with water just deep enough so that your piece of card can float. And all you need to do is place your piece of card on the water, drop the magnetized needle on it and give it a little spin. And it should, if I've been stroking it for long enough, align north along the north-south line. Of course, we're live, so it might not work. Also, you have to make sure there aren't any large metal objects nearby, like an iPhone, which we're filming on, and it's <laughs> attracting to it. <laughs> Didn't try that in the practice. But give it some time, and it should settle out facing north, like so, now that the needle's backed off. So I'm just going to try and draw upside down for you guys. You can mark them on like that. And we can do east, south, and the west. So you can draw on your north south cardinals and your east and west cardinals. And if you're not sure if it's worked, you can compare it with a real compass like this. So it's almost there, it's just touching the side. Let's just give it a little nudge away from the side. So, yeah, make sure you haven't got any large metal things like a fridge nearby or a magnet. <laughs> and it should line up along the north south axis. Maybe stroke it for a little bit longer than I did. If you don't have a, mag a compass at home, don't worry, because most smartphones have a compass app on them. And the way that you use a compass is using these lubber lines or the land lines, the bits that's printed on the glass. On the one that's for land, it's printed on the base plate there. And that always points in your direction of travel. It also has a rotating bezel with the cardinal marks on it and all the degrees of direction. And of course, a magnetic north needle. And a magnetic north needle always points north. And the reason for that is to do with magnets. I'm gonna talk about that in a moment. But if I wanted to know how to get south, for example, let's say I wanted to go to the ocean, that's where I always want to go. I'm just going to put south at the top of my land line and then rotate my body in the compass till the north needle is between the marker, the index markers. And then I'm just gonna head in that direction. That's how I can navigate using a compass. The reason that compass needles always point north is to do with the planet Earth. Do you remember in our first lesson, I told you about the four layers of the Earth. Can you remember what that middle layer was made of? It's made out of iron, solid iron. And it's that solid iron core that means that the Earth behaves like one giant magnet and it's got a magnetic field. And that's why compasses always point north. 
that magnetic field is so important because animals like dolphins and whales, even sea turtles, use that magnetic field to navigate. Sea turtles use the magnetic signatures of coastlines to find their way back to that first beach that they hatched on to lay their own eggs. So it's really exciting and they don't even need a compass to do it. But for us to navigate the ocean, we need a map and we need a compass. So now you're making a map and you know how to make a compass. I'm sure yours will work if you don't have any large metal items nearby. So have a go doing that. And once you've done it, mark on your map which direction is north. So draw that on your map once you've worked it out and you can compare it with a real compass to see if it's worked. When we're diving though, or in a submarine like Ant and his family, we don't just need to navigate where we're going, in which direction, we also need to navigate the water column up and down. And we do that using something called density. Can you say the word density? Density is a really important feature when we're diving. Have you ever been swimming and floated at the top of the pool? Or maybe you've dived down underneath the water and felt a squeeze on your ears? That's the pressure of all the water above you pushing on your eardrums. And us divers, we use that to help us navigate in the water column. I'll help to explain it using this little model here. This is a Cartesian diver. So what happens when we're diving or in a submarine, we add weight to our equipment to help us sink slightly. And as we sink, the pressure of the water squashes all the air bubbles in our equipment, making it smaller, making it take up less space. Therefore, its density increases and it sinks. So as I apply pressure, the air bubble in the bottle lid is being compressed, its density increases and it sinks. And as I release the pressure, the air bubble, the space between the air particles expands, the air bubble gets bigger, and the density decreases, so it floats. I'll show you one more time. If you want to create one of these yourself, it's quite tricky, but if you fancy a challenge, all you need is a compressible bottle and a little bottle lid, or anything that can have an air space in it or a hold air. I found that these little sauce sachets work really well. If you got a ketchup sachet or even a bottle lid works well, that's what I've done here. I've just decorated a bottle lid with some elastic bands to make this little jellyfish diver in there. So that's how divers navigate in the water column. It's also how ants and his family did it in the deep with their submarine using ballast. They changed their density. That's quite a challenging investigation and quite a difficult model to make because you have to make sure there's no air bubbles in that bottle. So there are other experiments we can do to investigate and explore density and they're really fun. So I want you to have a go doing some other density experiments. And the best thing about this experiment is it gets to use Skittles. Can you tell I like sweet? I really like sweet. So what you're going to do is get some Skittles. What a great excuse. It's for science. That's what you tell your parents. It's for science. Okay, so when you're going to get your Skittles, you're going to arrange them onto a plate in a pattern. I put mine in a circle here just for the ease. So have a little look. I'm just going to get some warm water. And... The reason I'm using warm water is just to speed things up. Everything goes faster when it's hot. So you can see what happens. And just pour the water gently in the middle of the plate. And watch what happens. My water's not so warm now that I've been talking. See what happens. I'm also going to do one over here. just about see the pattern starting to form. Isn't it beautiful? I just love this. Doesn't matter how many times I do it. I think it looks amazing. What I'd like you to do is have a go creating your own pattern using the Skittles. And then you need to think about the science behind it. And it's all to do with that word, density. As the sugars in the different colours of Skittles dissolves, it creates a different density of solution and they don't mix. So that's what creates that beautiful pattern. You can even draw in it if you've got a stick. You can make little patterns in the draw with it as well. So have a little go creating your own pattern. I've done one over here in the shape of a compass to be in keeping with our theme today, all about navigation. And the best thing about it is you get to eat the sweets afterwards. They just taste a little bit wet. But then this is all about the ocean, so that's okay. When I was doing this, I found these giant ones. So that's how I've made that pattern over there. So see if you can create a pattern using some Skittles. 
and think about the way that it involves density because this happens in the ocean as well. Sometimes you get different densities of water, like salt water and fresh water from our rivers mixing. And that creates what's called a halocline, where the fresh water on the top of this jar isn't mixing with the dark blue salt water on the bottom. I think it's slightly combined during this experiment, uh, during the, the show, but it's creating a halocline. And we have that in the ocean, which really is a feature and helps people to navigate in the sea. There's loads of different density experiments you can do. And I'd like you to have a go at your own one. You can either do one like I've done using the Skittles or you can use cooking oil. As you can see, cooking oil is less dense than water. So when I pour it in the water, it floats on top. You can get a layer of oil on top of the water. Have a go doing that at home. Maybe even drop some food colouring into it and see the effect. I don't want to spoil it for you here because it's so much fun but drop some food colouring on the top and see what you can see happening. Some density experiments out there are absolutely amazing. And I want you to go and explore and have some fun with science. And if nothing else, it means you get to eat some sweets. So you've got loads of things to be getting on with today. I'd love you to create your own map and see if you can do some geography. Find the closest bit of water to you. Even if you're quite far from the coastline, see if you've got a lake or a river nearby and find out which direction would you need to travel if you wanted to get to it. South, east, west, where would you need to go? And use your compass to find out. There's so much for you to be getting on with and I would really like to see those maps that you're creating, the experiments that you do, and some of the patterns that you're gonna create with some Skittles. I've really, really enjoyed doing these experiments today. I hope that you're going to as well. And thank you to everyone who's been sending in some amazing things to us here at learning at oceanconservationtrust.org. That's where we'd like to see your questions and all of the experiments and photos that you're sending in. I hope you've enjoyed learning about how we navigate the ocean using maps, using compasses, and adjusting our depth using density. Guys, I've really enjoyed this. Thank you so much for enjoying joining us. I'm gonna navigate north now and eat some sweets. Goodbye. <laughs>